Hello everyone, I'm Farmer Sim. Welcome to my first Modders Portfolio video, where I'll present to you an entire to-date collection of mods from one of our community's esteemed modders. In today's video, none other than BC Beulah Farms. Well, I've given myself quite a task for my first ever one of these videos. The mod list that I plan to present to you is as follows. The multiple branded pickup header pack. The bushel plus combine calibration system. The land clearing pack. The Landall 7431 VT disc harrow. The Meridian grain bin pack. The crop inputs cooperative buildings. The multiple branded swather pack. The versatile and New Holland four-wheel drive tractors. The Seed Hawk stroke Vardestart cedar and air cart system. The North American shed pack. The silage boss trailer. The vintage auger pack. The Mack truck grain hauling pack. And of course, the map we're on, none other than Edgewater, Saskatchewan. Now all of his mods bar one, or possibly two, are all av available for all platforms. The two that aren't are the Bushel Plus Combine Calibration System and one of the pickup headers, the, the MacDon branded pickup header. That's only for PC and Mac as for the, the Bushel Plus. So, let's get into it. The first mod I'd like to talk to you about is the Meridian Grain Bin Pack. Now in this pack of bins there is 32 in total. Um, we have 19 flat bottom bins, as you can see each one all around me, of various size and capacity. All used for storing base game crops and seeds. We have over here on the right hand side those three the hopper bins for base game crops and seeds. We have this set of hopper bins for base game crops and seeds and over there that set of five is again for base game crops and seeds but also fertilizer. Now as you can see each one of them has a, an icon nearby right next to it um, because every single one of the 32 bins in this pack has a really nice feature um, and I don't think I've seen it on, on any other bins so far in the game. Now uh, if, you, if you walk up to it you can see there it's got a, it's got a lever. You press the button there and look up you see the lid opens i think that's really cool um adds a little bit more realism and immersion into the game and uh, gives you something else to have to do when you uh, when you're looking to load up your bins with with your crops um now obviously it goes to say by looking at them for to use every single one of these you need uh, at least a pair of augers one to put in and one to put it one to take out um and i'll show you how to do that using the next mod the vintage auger pack here we are in the vintage auger pack it comes with two augers on the left in red you have the versatile td8-54 and on the right you have the john deere jd-398 um, now what makes these vintage is i think the fact that they both uh, they don't work on their own they don't they're not a standalone auger they need a tractor with a PTO to make them work as you can see there it's got a PTO shaft on the side uh, as does the John Deere um, they're pretty straightforward to use um, I'll show you what to do first of course we need to open the lid on the grain bin there we go so you jump in your tractor start the engine up connect up the PTO and then if you Turn the auger on, you see the corkscrew at the bottom there starting to turn and animate. And now it's ready to be loaded with, with some of your grain. So, here we go. So, I guess that leads us quite nicely into one of BC Bueller's next mods, which, if I'm honest, this is one of my favourites. Mac Grain Truck Pack. Just look at them. I adore these things. I have 
used these so much uh, in my own save games since they were released. Um, just gorgeous. Comes in two forms. You've got the rigid tipper truck here with the pup trailer and you've got the 6x4 tractor unit there with the 40 foot trailer um, but yeah I've got a real soft spot for these I, I've used them so much I think if they were, if it was a real thing it would need be in need of a full restoration by now and I've, I've covered what 2 or 3 trips to the moon and back in miles um, yeah really like these and the inside as well just the noise it makes I mean, the wood texture on the dashboard there, the dials, the buttons, the labels around them. The detail's just incredible. Absolutely love this thing. So, anyway, let's go and tip some grain into the auger. Well, I'll show you how to put the grain in and take the grain out of these flat bottom bins. Now, let's test my reversing skills here. Back we go, back we go. There we go. Tip the grain in. Now when you tip it in, and then you want to jump in the tractor and start overloading that. Oh, looks like I've missed a bit on the top there, but still working. See the grain going from the auger to the grain bin there. It's pretty straightforward. I even love the detail on the uh, on the auger there, look. The PTO driven shaft to the belt there, turning the mechanism. Just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, that's how you put it in. I'll show you now how to take it out of the flat bottom bit. Pretty much the reverse of before, pull underneath your auger, like uh, that, take your tarp back and, yep, and in we go, as simple as that. Obviously you have to connect the tractor to the PTO of the auger first and switch that on as we did with the red one before, and then, yeah, I just love the, the combination of them both, the authenticity of it, the fact that You've got to get out and do stuff to unload and load your grain bins as opposed to just turn up to a grate on the floor and tip it in. Um, yeah. So, that was so far. That's the grain bin pack, the vintage auger pack, and a little bit of the Mac truck pack. So, on to the next one. And the next mod I'd like to show you from BC Bueller's collection is the Landol 7431 Disc Harrow. Now this is a thing of beauty if you ask me. Um, quite a beast. If you go to the store, you can have it as either a mulcher, a disc harrow, or you can have it as both. So for those of you who are closely monitoring the finances of your farming and your fields, um, you can kill two birds with one stone with this and get two jobs done in one which I think is a brilliant idea. But just look at it, it's so well detailed, it's so nicely done. It really is. So, yeah, let's go and show you what this does in the field. But I suppose I guess I can't show you that without showing you the tractor that's going to be dragging it. And uh, Welcome to the versatile and New Holland four-wheel drive tractor pack. Now, I've put a couple of them out on display here in the New Holland colours. Um... Mainly because, mainly for the tyre options, because you, I think between them they've got, sorry, each they've got 25 tyre options across the brands and the different types of tyres you can have. Obviously, I've put the big triples on here for the to drag the land all around the field. You've got the the, the big twins, which I think are only available with the BKT branded tyre. Um, you've got the single big ones, and over here in the versatile colours. There's only a few of the options here that I've put on display, but you've got the single big ones again, you've got the the twins, um, the spaced out twins, and again, the triples. Um, in the versatile range, you've got 
five different engine options, I believe, ranging from 310 to 500 horsepower. And the new Hollands have, I think it's six engine options, again, ranging from 310 to 500 horsepower. Um, both the tractor designs are based on the Russell Mash 2375 tractor, um, but with a load of changes added to uh, what made it the to the North American market for the for these two tractors. Um, but again, this this tractor is one of my favourites, and you'll you'll see it in my upcoming uh, Edgewater series that I'm going to be making. Or I've started making. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's jump into it, and I'll. Uh, Show you what this does to your field. Here we are. Let's get into this readily prepped field and get the land all unfolded. Now, this particular one, I have gone for the mulcher and disc harrowing one, so I can just show you its genius. Um, so let's get it lowered down, and if you look closely at it might be slightly difficult to tell with this field texture, but if you look closely just under the first row of uh, discs there, you can see the lighter colour, and then towards the back you can see it's gone darker, so it's you can clearly see it's doing two in one. Mulching first, and then using the disc harrow after. It's just absolutely brilliant. And as I say, for those of you who are closely monitoring your your money as you uh, as you progress through your, uh, through your farm. It's oh, behind the fence. I think it's just brilliant. It does need about 300 horsepower um, in your tractor to be able to safely drag this behind you. So you are going to need something big like this. Um, I just may have missed a couple of bits along there, haven't I? Ignore that, please, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, what a bit of kit. And the tractor as well looks just just looks great with the triples. I'm quite partial to this one with the triples or or the big doubles in the BKT tyre. Um, it's quite fond of that. But just such a great set of mods. They really are. And the fact that the colour's almost identical as well. It just looks a good little convoy, doesn't it? Blue with the blue. So, there's that one. The Landall 7431 and the New Holland four-wheel drive tractor. So the next mod I'd like to show you from BC Bueller's collection is the North American Shed Pack. Uh, now this pack consists of three sheds in particular. You've got the Quonset. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Forgive me if I'm not. Is it Quonset or Quonset? Uh, sheds. These half round sheds here um, come in two types. You've got this one that has one door at the end here. Um, with just a wall at that end and as you can see it's more than big enough to house a big articulated truck um, and trust me you can squeeze quite a bit of kit into here if you wanted to um, really nice shed um, pop the main doors for you here there we go and you've got this one as well which is the Double door version, a door at either end. We'll pop these doors. And as you can see, admittedly, at first I didn't think the front doors were that big, but as you can see, you can quite happily get a 
a really big full-size combine in that's got the extra size hopper on the top and that can that can slot in quite easily without even coming anywhere near the the, the top of the door there so um yeah you can get some you can get quite a lot of stuff in here um really handy as a combine shed i find this one because you can drive in and out either end yeah really like that and then you've got uh, what's called the um a pole shed um which comes with it comes in with six colors um you've got the main part of the shed is always the same color and then the edges uh it can come in beige blue green gray red or white um now again from the outside i know compared to some you wouldn't necessarily think this was quite big um but look what you can get inside quite perfectly again uh segueing to reference another one of his mods um but literally quite perfectly you can squeeze this entire seed hawk pack in it's perfectly like it was meant to be um but yeah again i really like this shed it's a really nicely detailed i love the dark timber on the along the walls and along the roof there the rafters um yeah really really nice really well detailed and again the double doors at either end i just thought it was quite good that you could could literally perfectly squeeze in this seed hawk pack and the tractor so there it is the north american shed pack two variants of the quonset half round shed single door at the end or door at both ends and the pole shed available with six different accent colors really nice really nice indeed and yeah big enough to put a whopping great combine in perfect so the next one and as we've just seen it we'll go over this one now the seed hawk pack now this is a beast this is uh 19.8 meters wide this particular setup is in the vadestat colors as you can see here, the air cart at the back in Vadestat colours. Uh, this is available in the store with or without the conveyor. Um, this one obviously with the conveyor um, and with the big tyre options. Um, it's a hell of a thing, this. And in the Vadestat colours, I think it goes really well with the versatile tractor. Um, hence why it's set up like this. And, and what I've done out here, I have stuck one here that's in the seed hawk colors the, the maroon red color and this air cart here has the it's the tracks on the back and is the one without the conveyor so if you needed to load this up with seed and fertilizer you'd you could use a, a telehandler lifting bags up and over it or you could tow it under an auger um, from one of the grain bins um, entirely up to you um, and both can be customised in that you can have them in either order. When you buy them, you can have them either, either tow behind or tow between. So this could go there behind the tractor and this could sit behind the air cart, whichever order you prefer. I've always preferred to have the, the actual cedar itself behind the tractor and the air cart being towed behind that, as I've done with both these convoys. Um, now they are quite big. Um, maybe a little bit big for this particular map that there is one field I'm going to go and throw it in that's probably big enough but I mean even just driving it on the roads it takes up the whole thing um, but yeah it's a great piece of kit it really is um, made obviously by BC Bullet and in conjunction with uh, Forward Agricultural Solutions as well uh, this was a joint venture um, so yeah let's, let's go and chuck this in a field and do a quick rundown of it I wasn't kidding when I said it was quite big. Look at the size of it. I have, uh, as you can see, I have turned traffic off just to save embarrassment on my part because I don't want to be getting knocked sideways every time I come in, every time a car passes. So yeah, we will um, we'll chuck it in this field over here, which looks kind of big enough. 
for this thing. I do hope it fits through the gap in the fence, actually. Oh yeah, easy. So, let's get it in here and see what it does. So, here we are in the field. Now, I am a really big fan of the uh, the noises and the animations this thing has when you unfold it, so uh, I'll shut up for a second and, uh, yeah, just enjoy it unfolding. How awesome's that? What isn't quite as awesome is my field positioning. I've managed to fail miserably there and I've lost a few inches off the side of that cedar there as I pulled into the uh, into the field, but hey ho. Let's uh, let's drop it down. Switch it on. And off we go. Now this does require I think 450 horsepower. So you do need a pretty substantial tractor to, to drag this along. But look at that. Just perfect. Looks brilliant, doesn't it? Such a good bit of kit. Oh, my field position is getting worse. Losing an edge there. Forgive me, please, ladies and gentlemen. And straighten it up. Now I'm not going to try and do a nice neat 90 degree corner here. I'm just going to try my best to swing round on a smooth corner and at least try and butt up to that edge as best as I can. Oh, a little bit over. I have done better, I promise. There we are. But still, it's a cracking bit of kit. Really is. As I say, it does this this versatile tractor does really suit the uh, the Vadestat colours with this this convoy. Looks great. But yeah, the Seedhawk Pack by BC Bueller and Ford Agricultural Solutions. And the next mod I'd like to show you is the Swather Pack. Now, these machines can, and their headers can all be found in the mowers section. Um, it comes in Heston colours, Challenger colours, the Challenger yellow, Case colours and the Massey Ferguson colours. Um, it comes with uh, this mower. All, all the mowers and headers are available in the corresponding colours to the different brands to suit you. Um, you've got the 16 foot razor bar mower here that comes with a built-in conditioner for to help dry your grass and you've got the 30 foot agco 5200 header here again available in all the corresponding colors for the different uh, different brands you might like to choose from um now these are a stroke of genius they're absolutely brilliant 
Um, but quickly before I go into them as well, it also comes the pack also comes with this trailer. Um, so you, if you had to travel long distances across your map, depending on how far you've got to go, you can load the machine up onto this trailer. Now, I did find it a bit tricky at first, I'll be honest, because um, but I got it got it working. The trick is, I think you've got to, you've got to unfold the the trailer itself um, and reverse the machine on. Don't go forward if you've got a header on, because the header won't make it over the wheels. Um, but I'll, I'll show you quickly because the because all the machines have got these funky little dolly wheels at the back. Um, as soon as you drive forward in the pickup truck, the wheels just turn and face the direction you're going. So I'll quickly show you that. But yeah, I suppose this is for... If you had to travel far. But there, I think it's, just, it's pretty cool, that. And it works also with the big header as well. You can you can have your mower with the, the big 30-foot uh, Agco 5200 header on, um, and it'll work just the same. But yeah, I think that's really cool. Um... But anyway, let's uh, get one of these into the field here. I'm going to use this uh, case branded one here, 8860. Now, regarding the headers, um, with this being a swather, you can have you can choose where you want your swath to drop. So you can have it as it's set there. You can see it's set for the middle, um, or you can change it to a left-hand swath, or a right-hand swath, or have it set in the middle. Um, now I'm a bit of a fan of course play, um, so I will always tend to have the swath set to drop in the middle, um, because what you can do, you can combine multiple courses, uh, oh sorry, sorry, you can use the same course for multiple machines, so if I run this machine now in this field, um, which is flax, ready to harvest, um, it'll drop the swath in the middle and then you can use the, the combined pickup header on the same course um, and also a baler on the same course as well so it, it, you can you can do multiple jobs on the same course plate course so yeah if we drop the header down turn it on and put ourselves into the field and we'll have a quick run around with this as you can see a nice swath dropping in the middle there now these I believe that the, the swathing mechanism itself is uh, at the minute unique to this map. Um, the map, if you if you want to use swathing, you have the map has to have it set up to work into the map. And um, I'm afraid that that knowledge is a bit beyond me. I'm not very good with with actual modding and messing around with the XMLs in in, in mod maps, etc. But as you can see, we've got a whole new crop texture there. And what that um, what that header has done is essentially just chopped the whole crop and dropped it into a, a nice neat swath in the middle there so you can you can follow up afterwards or behind with uh, your combine of choice with the the pickup headers which is another one of uh, BC Bulu's mods which we'll go through in a few minutes but I'll just very quickly show you this thing running around From the swather pack is the 16 foot razor bar mower and twin max conditioner um now oh, this does two jobs in one as did the land doll um it mows your grass and conditions it and turns it into hay so again those of you closely monitoring your farm's finances can cover two jobs in one 
certainly reducing the cost of your fuel anyway. Uh, and as if by magic, we now have a ready to harvest field of grass over here. So let's throw it in the field, give you a quick demonstration of it. And what I'm also going to do, uh, I've just grabbed a, a mower there. There it is, there it is. Um, just to show you the difference between the grass and the hay, just to show you exactly what it does. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's jump in. So, in we go, lower it down, turn it on, and off we go. And as you can see, you've got the lighter colour there, the swath, highlighting that it's hay. And what we'll do now, I'll just run the standard mower next to it, and just to show you the difference that it does do hay instead of grass. So, let's go grab that. So, here we are in the mower. Let's just quickly run this into the field. And run alongside. And drop that down. Turn it on. Off we go. And as you can see there, the clear difference between the, the colour of this swath and the colour of the swath left by the, uh, the swathing machine. Swather. And there we are. A swath of grass from a normal mower and a swath of hay from the 16 foot razor bar mower and twin max conditioner. Lovely mod. So, on to the next one. So, yes, the pickup header pack. I have one attached to this combine here. I was very grateful that it was also available in the Caterpillar Klaas Lexian colour, the yellow there. Um, but again, a beautifully detailed piece of kit. Brilliant things, these. Um, but before I show you the thing in action, what I'm going to do is uh, is just very quickly read for you the description of it from the the, pay, the download link on the, on the Mod Hub. Um, as obviously BC Billy knows far more about this stuff than I do, um, and his, his description of it is uh, is just far more informative. So, um, the pickup header pack with lots of brand options to match most in-game combines and the most popular mod combines. A pickup header is used to pick up swaths or windrows of a crop as a method of harvesting grains such as canola, barley, oats, or wheat. It's primarily done for a few reasons, such as quicker drying of green plant material and reduced losses due to shattering. With recent advancements in crop genetics, the practice of swathing is becoming less common, but is still done in different parts of the world. So, I hope that explains the use of them uh, a bit more than I'd be able to ramble on about. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get this beast chucked in the field, and I shall show you them in action. So, we're in the combine, in the field. And it really is just as simple as following the, the swath lines with your your new shiny pickup header. Um, and what the, the pickup header will do, we'll simply pick it all up and uh, feed it through the combine into the hopper, ready to be fed out as normal out the auger and into your grain truck or your trailer. So we'll uh, run this for a wee while and I'll uh, show you the process. And we need to be ready to go and uh, empty the combine, so what better vehicle to use than the wonderful Mack grain truck again. Got another one here in white. Um, so yeah, let's jump in and go and empty the combine. So forgive me, one uh, one point I did fail to mention earlier is uh, regarding the pickup header pack, it does still give you the option to uh, to have a straw swath um, 
when you're running your harvester. So as you can see here, this is where the harvester's been. It's, uh, it's picked up this swath, it's filtered it through its system, and it's spat out the straw out the back. So this is flax straw. Um, so you can still run your baler over this and, and, and pick up a load of bales and benefit from that. Um, sell them, make a bit of money, whatever. Um, here's the original uh, swath that hasn't been picked up yet by the harvester. And here's what it looks like when it's been through the harvester and spat out the back again. So, brilliant. So, let's pull up alongside this harvester and uh, let it unload some flax. So there we go, and there's a quick uh, a quick showcase of the pickup headers in action, and the Mack truck again, emptying the harvester. So yeah, let's uh, let's move on to the next one. And the next mod I'd like to show you all is BC Bueller's Silage Boss trailer. Now this is a an another great bit of kit. Um, and I think it suits really well being towed by the uh, the Max 6x4 tractor unit. Um, it's a really versatile trailer. Um, you can get it in two configurations. You can have it in standard configuration, which gives you a total carrying capacity of 65,270 litres. But that just gives you uh, silage fill types. So grass, chaff, hay, silage, straw, sugarcane, wood chips, or if you're on this map, flax straw. Um, but you can also get it in an unrealistic capacity, which gives you 260,000 litres of any fill type. So, um, yes, it gives you a, the unrealistic capacity, but you can fill it with anything. Um, and the other thing I really like about this, um, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this before, but when you've got a big tipper trailer that tips up into the air, when you when you take your, your crops for sale and you take them to um, a, a sell point and it's one of these drive-through areas where you've got a roof to consider your, your tipper trailer can very very quickly get kind of caught on the roof and it kind of glitches into the ground and causes you causes you a few issues but this trailer is a pusher trailer so it doesn't it doesn't actually tip up and go into the air it just shoves everything out the back here so um if you do have it in the unrealistic capacity um and you use it for harvesting and emptying your combines into and you want to take your grain to be sold you're not limited to where you can sell them you can drive it into one of the into one of the buildings and tip it and uh, and you won't get have any problems with the, the the trailer hitting the hitting the actual building so yeah brilliant brilliant bit of kit uh, i've used this quite a lot as well um and as i say it, it goes perfectly with the mac tractor unit as well so yeah another great mod love it so on to the next one So, welcome everybody to the Bushel Plus Combine Calibration System. Now, this is the mod that is at the moment only for PC only. Um, down to the branding, I, I, I think. Um, and before I fit it to the Combine, uh, I'm just going to read the description from the, from the mod's uh, link on the Mod Hub page. 
The Bushel Plus system is the authentic combine calibration system designed to quantify your harvest loss by determining exactly how accurate your combine is calibrated. Every farmer's goal is to maximise efficiency and to minimise combine losses during harvest. We offer the most reliable and robust calibration system for the harvest industry, which makes our all-in-one system the number one combine loss measurement system and device on the market. Savings from farmers have been reported anywhere from 2 to 10%. Just imagine harvesting and selling that much more grain because you've spent a few minutes every day to check your combine harvest loss. To install Bushel Plus on your virtual combines, attach it to the rear attacher joint and use mouse control to position it on the rear axle of the combine. Yields will be improved by 10% due to the more accurate calibrating of the combine. So, I guess that says it all. And it says that I'm definitely going to be having this on every single one of my combines from now on. Um, I shall show you very quickly how to attach it to the machine, so pretty much just drop it straight behind the combine and jump in and quite simply reverse over it, there we are, and attach it and you'll see there, you can see it there on the trailer hitch and you can position it how you want and now I believe this should now give us I mean, what it's essentially done is it's it's added a bit of realism into the gameplay so that you can you can calibrate your combine basically to so make sure that it's it's getting as much yield as it, as it can off your field. So, um, what we'll do, I've, as if by magic again, I have prepared a field of wheat in front of us here, and just to show the differences of with and without the the bushel plus system, I'm going to run the same row. So from here, by Drop the header down, turn it on, and just run a straight line from here to up there, and then we'll do the same thing again, but without the combine calibration system on, and we'll check the yields. So, back in a moment. So, we've just ran that very short strip there from the entrance of the field up to the field edge here. Um, now, this is obviously with the Bushel Plus calibration system on and we yielded from that strip 1254 liters of wheat so i'm going to run this exercise again but without the system attached and i shall report back the findings so there we are as you can see i now have 1104 liters of wheat in my hopper i'm running the same strip of land so that is a difference of 150 litres. Now, I know that's only 150 litres across this very small strip, but if you if you consider that into a into any big field, this field or, or an even bigger field, that could be a huge gain just by using that bushel plus system. Um, so yeah, that's going to be attached to every single one of my combines from now on. It's very reasonably priced from the store. It's I think it's two thousand dollars from the shop, so it's a no-brainer really. Um, and it's a brilliant bit of kit. It's, it just adds that extra bit of of immersion and realism into the into using your combines. To so you can say to yourself, "Yep, I'm going to go and uh, calibrate my combine and make sure it's running running properly." Um, throw the bushel plus system onto the back of it, and there you have it. An extra almost well, in this case, it was almost ten percent, but yeah, an extra ten percent of, of of yield on top of what you'd ordinarily have. So it's a no brainer in my eyes. Brilliant. Now, everybody, welcome to the land clearing pack. Now, the pack the pack itself consists of the quick claw here, which is the attachment on the front of the excavator, and this jerry can, which is a fire, essentially. Um, the truck and the trailer have got uh, aren't part of the packet. That's just to move them around. And now there is the excavator. This is uh, part of the platinum expansion. Um, but again, like I have done before, just bear with me two seconds while I read you the description from the Mod Hub's page. The land clearing pack represents the way a lot of farmers in North America clean up and clear land to improve their fields and make them easier to farm. Consisting of a grapple bucket and jerry can or fire, this pack can help you quickly and easily take care of those trees in your way. It is designed for the Volvo excavators from the Platinum expansion, but will also work on most other excavator mods as well. Um, this is 
genius, if you ask me. It adds a huge amount of realism and emotion into into the the, the, the job of clearing up, clearing some trees, clearing some brush, making you you know expanding your fields. If you've got some trees and an area like that in the way, you can instead of just getting the old uh, uh, chainsaw out and just chopping the trees down and landscaping it with the construction tools, you can you can get in a machine and use this. So. Without further ado, I'm going to jump in this truck here and we'll, we'll, we'll go to a gathering of trees, a grassy area with a load of bushes and stuff, and I shall show you how to use it. So, here we are. We're going to pull into this farmyard here and we're going to clear ourselves some trees and have a bit of a fire. So, I'll just pull up here. Give me a few seconds to get, these, uh, get this big excavator unloaded. And... You'll join me back in a minute. So, here we are. We're unloaded. We've got the excavator off. Now, what you need to do is... You need to turn on the quick claw. And... I'll, I'll show you first. If you look at the ground around the bucket, you see how you can clear the bushes? It's absolute genius, this. You can basically, if you if you have the the bucket relatively flat to the floor, you can landscape around where you where you're moving. And if you look at the trees, when you You'll have to bear with me here, I'm not very good with the. Uh... There you go. You see how the trees falling down there? It just knocked it down. Um, let me try and get this big one. Right there. Took a bit, but I've knocked down the big tree. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up the lumber that I have created and place it in a pile, and then I'll show you what to do with the with the jerry can. Right there, picked it up, just and dropped it again. Well, I guess that's going to be the perfect place for the fire. So, I'm not going to embarrass myself on camera here, give me 30 seconds, I am going to pick up all the other loose bits that I've created, and then we shall dig out the jerry can. So, we're going to grab the jerry can now, and I'll show you what to do with the fire. So, you pick it up, and you want to place it pretty much right close up to the, the pile of wood that you've just created drop it down and you enter it like a vehicle so in you go turn the engine on as you would and you'll see the fire come up but then you need to turn the fire on in order to remove the trees so when you turn it on as you'll see there how everything slowly sinking into the ground this is absolutely brilliant just look at that it's incredible and then when you're done Turn the fire off, turn the engine off, and get out. How amazing is that? Now, don't get me wrong, my excavator grappling skills have a lot, leave a lot to be desired, so I know I've got a lot of practice to do with that, so apologies I'm not a professional yet. But you get the idea, you can see what can be done with a bit of work and a hell of a lot of practice from, on my part. Anyway, you could clear this entire area you can get rid of all the stumps using the bucket just the way you do to scrape it across the ground it removes the stumps um, and then have a big fire and get rid of it all how authentic and realistic is that it's absolutely amazing so hats off to BC Bueller for creating this it's just mega absolutely mega so the land clearing pack there it is And now the penultimate mod in this collection is the Crop Inputs Cooperative Buildings, which are the three buildings you see in front of me. Uh, on the left here we have the Seed Shed. This bigger one is the Fertiliser Shed. And just over the back there with the three silos next to it is the Chemical Shed. So I shall show you each one individually and we'll start with the Seed Shed. So, as it is, the, the seed shed on its own, the, um, the mod pack itself can be downloaded separately and be put onto any map. Um, but as it is here on Edgewater, um, 
if you don't own the building, it is possible to buy it as it, and it turns itself into a production, but if you don't buy it and you just have it as is on the map, it's quite simply a, a seed buying point. So you roll your roll your tractor and trailer in and drop onto the auger and boom, you get seed from it. So it's as simple as that. Now, if you buy it, now I'll jump out here and we'll buy the production point. There it is. You click on yes. It now becomes its own production point where it will produce seeds for you. So if we go into the productions menu, there we are, as you can see, cycles per month 24, production costs 336,000. Now don't be alarmed by that, it, it does appear quite high, but it's there to simulate the the price of buying seeds if, it, if the production facility was to run constantly for a month, that's what it would cost. But it does have a limit of 18,000, so when you activate it and it runs, it, it will just run by itself, just producing seeds. You don't need to put any input into it. Um, and the equivalent cost would be that per month if it was running for the entire month. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant. Um, but the other thing you can do with this is you can you can take your bulk... I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll fill this up, actually, to the top this, for the purposes of this demonstration. So if we... Top this trailer right to the top. I think it takes about eighteen and a half thousand liters. But yeah, what you can do is you can have. Uh, you might have seen the there's a one of the big convey all augers outside. Um, when you own it, you can take bulk seeds and tip them back into the production system and turn the bulk seeds that's in the trailer here into uh, pallets or pro boxes. I think they're called in, in this mod. So if we roll out of here, and as you can see, I've got the uh, the big conveyor there. I did, unfortunately, I, I did try and use one of the vintage from one of the vintage augers, the, the larger one, the re the red one from the um, vintage auger pack, but it just wasn't quite tall enough to reach the, the middle of the hopper, and it just kept dumping it on the ground around the bottom. So, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to use this really big one, the conveyor, all. and if we reverse up to the conveyor and tip the seed in there you can see the seed there is going into the hopper bin there that's on the outside of the seed shed now if I'm correct in saying now we go back into the shed and as you'll see it's converted what was in that trailer into I think it's called pro boxes of seed so there you've got I think just over 1500 litres in each one of seed so that you can use the forklift that's provided there and just use it as you need it instead of having a big trailer of it so really clever really good really cool little mod that or big as it was with it in the case of this so yeah crop inputs cooperative seed shed and now I shall show you the fertilizer shed so here we are I've picked up one of these bread alf fertilizer spreaders and this one quite simply as I say it's just a, a buying point for fertile for both types of fertilizer so pull under the auger press the fill button and you've got the option of lime or solid fertilizer so simple as that really just a really nice mod and obviously with it being built into Edgewater like this it's a makes it really handy but there we go couldn't be simpler so now I shall show you the chemical shed here we are again I picked up this hardy Rubicon crop sprayer um, and again, in, in its standard form, if you don't own this one, you can just pull up to the side of it here. See the little trigger there? Touch the fill button, and you've got the options of liquid fertiliser or herbicide. So, pretty straightforward. But as I say, you can also, this is also one that you can buy. So, if we pop out of here and buy the production point for 10,000, the chemical shed for 10,000, yep, there we go. 
and this works in pretty much the same fashion as the seed shed in that um, it will just produce for you uh, chemicals so if we speed up some time there you see we have just fast forwarded a day very quickly there and we have liquid fertilizer and herbicide um, just produced for us so that's pretty cool and the cost does simulate what it would cost if you were buying it normally so you know don't be alarmed by the uh, when you go into the productions there for herbicide there 432,000 a month and liquid fertilizer 600,000 a month so obviously liquid fertilizer is a bit more expensive than herbicide um and that's what it would cost you if it was running every minute of every day for the entire month but obviously it's not going to do that because it's got a limit of 18,000 liters on the production so once it hits 18,000 it'll stop producing and stop costing you so brilliant absolutely brilliant if you ask me so that was the collection all but one of bc bueller's mods that he's created for this game so i guess now all that's left for me to do is firstly to say a, a wholehearted thank you to bc bueller for his incredible time and effort that he puts into making these mods um and also for giving me the go ahead to to, to make this video um and also thanks again to, to bc bueller and to south sass modding for creating this absolute masterpiece of a map um now i appreciate this video has been quite long uh, and i i thank you all for sticking with me if you have done um i'm not going to do a really big in-depth map review uh, as i know there are a handful of those already been made uh so what i've done is i've just put together a bit of a bit of a cinematic video i think you can call it just to present the map in a, in a nice way um to finish this this long video off um so thank you everyone for watching thank you again to bc bueller for all his time and effort in making the mods and to all modders for for, for doing that uh, and thanks to both bc bueller and south sass modding for this map um it's an absolute treat um so thank you i've been farmer sim um and i'll catch you in the next video cheers